Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist, brought to you by the team at OnePitch. Are you looking for a more efficient way to find and pitch the right journalists? Head to our website at onepitch.co to learn more. Our guest on today's episode of Coffee with a Journalist is Rebecca Pfeiffer, senior reporter at Healthcare Dive. Rebecca covers the business of healthcare with a focus on health insurers and public policy. During the episode, Rebecca discusses the nuances of healthcare journalism, the instances where it's okay to ping her multiple times with an idea, and the ideal elements of a standout subject line. Hint, it's all about short, sweet, direct, and relevant. Welcome, everyone. This is Coffee with a Journalist. And we do this little show to help publicists have better relationships, ideally, with our media friends and contacts, because we all need to work together. I'm Beck Bamberger, and I'm a publicist myself, so that's why I'm here. And I also built, along with a lot of other people, one pitch to help solve this problem of getting to better match journalists for all of our pitches, because we got to send a lot of pitches out. So there we go. With us today, coming live from D.C., I want to hear about the weather, because I like D.C. in the summer, is... Also a Rebecca, Rebecca Pfeiffer, who is the senior reporter at Healthcare Dive. So we're going to get into it. Welcome, Rebecca. Thanks so much for having me back. Yes. By the way, I have a little note here on my sheet that says you're an award-winning journalist. (laughs) Award-winning. Tell us a little bit more. I mean, I know the awards, but you can tell us. Yeah. So Healthcare Dive, which is the publication I I write for, we're a B2B publication Mm -hmm. primarily aimed at at healthcare executives. So we've won a number of business awards, Neil Awards, ASB Awards, and I've contributed to that Mm -hmm. work in those packages. So yeah, happy to be here. Yes. Excellent. For those who don't maybe know, I do ask this of every outlet, even like the New York Times, what would you say is the coverage encompassing Healthcare Dive and then specifically yours, because there's lots of nuances to healthcare. How would you describe it? Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, we're again, we're a business to business publication. Mm -hmm. So we write about the business of healthcare for an audience of healthcare business executives. So that runs the gamut from hospital executives, insurer executives, the wide variety of companies that operate in in the healthcare space. We're targeted at, at getting them the news that they need to do their jobs more effectively. Mm -hmm. Good to know. And then more specifically for you, what's the kind of content you like to do? Because for instance, I see you talking about Medicare, Medicaid, scripts, you're talking to house committee. So you're based in DC, you're talking politics and things like this, CVS. So it's quite wide, it sounds, but also probably government leaning. Yeah, I, I cover a lot of stuff. So Right now, my beat is more so focused on health insurance, but I'm also really interested in in retail health and PBMs and Mm -hmm. public policy. But yeah, it's kind of a mismatch of stuff and whatever strikes my fancy at Mm -hmm. at a particular Mm -hmm. moment. Or maybe what strikes your inbox. So let's talk about that. How (laughs) is your inbox? It's good. It's pretty full. (laughs) Okay. Wow. But no one usually comes on here and it's like, it's good and full. No, it's usually like, There's two emails and I'm happy. (laughs) This is odd. Okay. So it's good and full, full with what's in there? Pitches? A lot of pitches. Yeah. I guess when I say it's good, I mean more so it's very healthy. There's a lot of it. I think that this is actually a good reminder for me, honestly, that I need to go through. I haven't gone through my pitches today. I try to do that every morning, but yeah, Hmm. lots of different stuff in there. Okay. Do you have an organization system for this inbox? Honestly, not really. I definitely should. And I've thought about a lot of different ways I could. Mostly what I do is every morning I go through and I mass delete things that have absolutely no like relativity to anything that I cover, right? Mm -hmm. So I get a, a large variety of pitches that A, aren't even about healthcare or are about healthcare, but are more consumer focused and Mm -hmm. aren't anything that I would cover or they're about companies that are outside of my beat. And so I'll just go through and I'll just delete all those pretty much based on subject line. And then everything remaining based off, you know, if I know the person or if the Mm -hmm. subject line is important, I'll click those, I'll open those and read through them in the morning. And then by the end of the day, I try to go through everything else and delete everything else if it's not important or like flag it for potential follow-up or something like that. But I don't, I don't use folders as much as I probably should. Mm, Okay. Not a folder flag girl. Got it. But sounds like you're a deleter. So are you inbox zero camp? 
I definitely try to be. I try yes, to, by the end too. of every week, get it down to zero. I tried yeah, I for, a, yeah, for a long time. I was like, by the end of every day, and then I just couldn't, couldn't keep, keep up. With yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> with the not, volume that, of emails that's, coming yeah, in. So. Yeah. Mm, mm, yes. Okay. You earlier mentioned like a great subject line. So can you get a little bit more into that? What is the subject line? You're like, oh yes, I need to low, I need to do that. Yeah. This I imagine would be really hard for my, you know, my heart goes out for publicists and for PR people because it is difficult having your work sort of yeah. judged by, you know, five to ten words. But yeah, for me, a good <laughs> no subject pressure. line, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> For me, a good subject line is A, related to what I cover. I mean, that's like the biggest thing. I get so many emails that, again, have nothing to do with anything that I cover. And those just get deleted immediately. And those you can pretty easily tell from the subject line. If it's too long or too complex, you know, some subject lines, they try to get like witty or do some sort of a metaphor or something. And I'm like, you know, I'm a business reporter. Things yeah. should be like direct and to the point. Yeah. So sometimes that will cause me to be like, huh? And doesn't exactly engender me to, to open those or to do like mm-hmm. a, you know, a heavy read of those. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so good ones are short, I would say, and direct and relevant. Short, direct, relevant. That's good. Source why, source wise, what or who are you looking for? Good question. So I definitely do get sources from pitches, but they have to be a really good source. You know, I get a lot of outreach from people putting up an executive at a company to comment on a trend when they might not be like the best, you know, third party non-biased person to comment on that trend. So I'm always looking for sources who are, you know, academics, who are researchers at think tanks, you know, analysts, financial analysts, lawyers are always incredibly helpful. And yeah, right now specifically, if you're knowledgeable about like PBM business models or the intricacies of the Medicare Advantage space or antitrust policy, very interested in those areas right now. So hit me up. Okay. Mm, This is good. Today's interview We'll continue after this brief message brought to you by OnePitch. Are you curious to learn about the unique ways OnePitch helps brands engage with the right journalists? Head to OnePitch.co and create your own custom media list in five minutes or less. Now back to today's episode. And then for those sources, you get someone, you see an email, what's the ideal pitch for a source? of those that you just listed? Is it, hey, this person's available and here's the points that they could say? Is it these are their credentials and take what you want from that? Like, how do you kind of suss out that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think tying in how your source might be relevant to an interesting story right now is always helpful. So, you know, the subject could be like, I don't know, let's say your source is, is a lawyer in the antitrust space. The subject line could be like legal expert on FTC non-compete ban in healthcare or something, Mm, you know, short to the point says who they are, says why they're relevant to me. And then preferentially the email would be short too. you know, source the name, why they're relevant. If you want to include a brief, you know, one, two punch on their background, that can't hurt, but also I'm going to do research into these people myself before I reach out to them. Yeah. So yeah, I would just say, keep it short. Keep it short. Okay. By the way, since you are based in DC, are you doing coffees, meetings with people in the politic world? And what does that look like? Definitely. Yeah. Very open to in-person meetings. Oh, uh, she likes a coffee. Maybe. Okay. Tell she, us more. Tell us more. I can't drink coffee actually, because it makes me. Oh no. Inc- okay. I know. I know. It gives okay, me no coffee. energy and I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack, but oh, definitely tea. God. Okay. She's definitely tea. tea. I'm definitely an an in-person girl. So yeah, reach out to me, whether it's about something specific or not. I don't have a ton of free time, but there's no harm in reaching out because if I do, always down to meet new people. Okay. In DC specifically. So you want to do tea. Do you ever like happy hour, anything like that? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Especially all the drinks. The it's nice. I, I and it's nice. And it's not, hour. it's not pitch black outside at five o'clock. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Take God. advantage. Oh, I and know. And it's not disgustingly humid yet. Not yet. Exactly. Not yet. We not probably have another few days. Yet. Yes. <laughs> so take advantage. That is great. Okay. As a reporter, do you need to pitch your stories to your editor? You earlier said like, oh, I do what I want. And that's like, but is there a process like that? Because we want to demystify to publicists how it actually works in terms of getting a story greenlit. Yeah, good question. So Mm -hmm. for Healthcare Dive, since I'm a senior reporter, I have more latitude in what Mm -hmm. I cover. So if there's a particular story that I want to pursue, you know, beyond the news cycle, you know, if there's breaking news Mm -hmm. or hard news, we cover that as it comes. But for longer Mm -hmm. pieces, yeah, I'll think of a story idea or something will come up in one of my conversations. I'll do a little bit of research into it to make sure it's something that is viable and is interesting. And then I'll bring it to my editor and be like, hey, I'd love to work on this. And then most of the time they're like, great. Enjoy Knock yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay. Good to know. You earlier were mentioning subject lines, you know, they're clear, they're business directed, they're what you want. You also talked about like ones you don't like. So now let's say you open that email, you're looking out the pitch, you want it brief, you, you mentioned, but what's like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect pitch because of X, if you could describe. Mm. I mean, I hate to be a broken record and bring okay. up relevance again. That's okay. We want to hear it. Yeah. Relevant, topical. I mean, not all pitches need to be tied to something that's going on right now. You know, if you have an incredibly novel company or you're calling out an incredibly novel trend, those are always really helpful, but it should be something that I'm going to be interested in. Yep. I think too, like just structure wise, I'm a big fan of, of bullets over paragraphs. Oh, um, okay. That's on our rapid fire question list, but yes, perfect. Oh Oh, yeah. (laughs) Sorry to, sorry to, sorry to preempt. No, it's great. But yeah, big fan of bullets. I think sometimes when you have, you know, like dense copy and a bunch of paragraphs and you're trying to sort of argue your point, it's just, things can get lost. You know, you're busy. I'm busy. Bullets, I think sort of cut through that. Bullets work. Bullets work. Great. Is there something publicists can do just to make your life easier besides bullets in a pitch? Yes. I think stop pitching me things that don't have to do what I come like with what yeah, I cover. clearly just don't bug um, you. This, yeah, this has just been like a big problem recently, more so than it's been. Why in the past, recently, so you think? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I just, I feel like in the last like two weeks, the majority, not majority, but you know, too many, I've gotten too many pitches that Hmm. are about, you know, sexual health or marijuana or consumer Hmm. wellness, which, you know, all very interesting topics and a lot going on in all those spaces right now. But what you do, Mm -hmm. just not what you do. I also got a number of pitches earlier in the year where I ended up blocking the publicist, which I've oh, never no. done. I've Ooh. never done before. Oh God. Okay. What led to that? That's our worst well, nightmare. Yeah. What they were doing was the subject line was incredibly vague. And so, you know, I want to do my due diligence. I'm not going to delete something unless I know it's not relevant. So then I open it and then it would be like X other outlet is reporting on this story, but they're missing the bigger picture talk to our expert to learn what it is. Hmm. And that would be it. And Mm. it was an interesting, almost like question mark situation. But Mm -hmm. then it's just like, I shouldn't have to chase you to explain what you're trying to pitch to me. To me, You know what I mean? In my two seconds of time. Yeah. Yes. And I got a lot of those emails and a lot of them were again about stories that were healthcare related. And so I reached out to them and I was like, can you please stop pitching me non-healthcare related stories? And they were like, sure. And then they continued pitching me non-healthcare related stories. No. Okay. That's how I get blocked. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So don't do that. Don't do that. my suggestion. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Even worse is they said, okay, yes, no, we understand. And then they then 
kept doing it. That's yeah, yeah. I was really surprised by that. Yeah. Was it from different people, by the way, at the agency, perhaps? Or was it just don't tell me it's the same person? It was from different people at the uh, agency, but the same person that I emailed did do it to me. Again. Oh, no. Oh, well, then, you know, you're like on a spray and pray list of sorts. Oh, yeah. Oh, and geez. the thing with that, too, is like that was a particularly uh, egregious example. But it's like we can tell, you know, like reporters can tell if you're just copy and pasting our name into the dear blank part of your email. Mm-hmm. And that's not great if we can tell that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my boy. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that, Rebecca. That is good to know. Don't get on the banish list, publicists. We have a rapid fire question part, Rebecca, that I think you might find interesting slash intriguing. Some of the points you already covered off on, but here we go. If you're ready. I'm ready. Video or phone interview? Ooh, I personally prefer phone. Okay. Or yes. Phones in, coming in person, back. I would say, but oh, or in person, or not yes. in the same place. We also talked about already bullet points or paragraphs. So we covered that images attached or Dropbox zip file attached email or a DM of some sort somewhere. Who knows where email, email one follow-up or multiple. Ooh, preferably just one. Although I would say that there has been a few situations over my career where people have reached out to me like three or four times and I just missed it the first few times. And then I was really glad they did follow up with me, but there you go. If you've done your research and you think it's something really relevant to me, I will not be angry if you follow up multiple times, but if it's something totally unrelated and you follow up multiple times, then that's slightly annoying. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Noted on that front. We already talked about director creative subject line. So how about press release or media kit? I don't really have a strong opinion, honestly. Okay. I think hmm. whichever medium you feel will give us like the most and the clearest information, just go with that. I think hmm. it's more so about how it's written than the medium in which it's delivered. Because a lot of press releases nowadays are really either filled with a lot of jargon or they seem like they're written by AI and you can't even really get a sense of what the company is trying to say. Uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. (laughs) Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Is there a particular time you read pitches? Uh, Mostly in the morning. Yeah. Pretty much first thing in the morning. Mm, Okay. Yeah. First thing in the morning. And then again, the next day. Yeah. So usually I'll go through when I start work and just scan my inbox and yeah, if there are things that seem interesting, I'll open and read them then before I get started on the rest of my day. And then I try to finish everything else up by the end of the day. And then yeah, mm-hmm. process starts again mm-hmm. next morning. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's back at it with that. Okay. And then lastly, is there anything we can highlight, promote, tout about you? Oh, sign up for Healthcare Dive, I would say. Yeah. If, if you're in the healthcare space, we have a daily newsletter that goes out around like 11 a.m. noonish every day. And then we have two weekly newsletters. We have one on Wednesday that's focused on the health insurance sector and then one on Thursday that's focused on health IT. Mm-hmm. So yeah, great source for a variety of business news in the space. Okay, we're going to sign up. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for being on today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You got it. Rebecca Pfeiffer from Healthcare Dive. She's a senior reporter. Don't invite her to coffee because she's not going to drink it, but everything else is good. Excellent. Thanks for listening to this week's Coffee with a Journalist episode featuring Rebecca Pfeiffer, senior reporter at Healthcare Dive. For more exclusive insights about the journalists on this podcast, subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter at onepitch.co slash podcast. We'll see you next week, but until then, start great stories.